How you doing guys? Welcome to Rotor Riot. Final Glide Oz here. Today I wanted to do a little bit of an introduction for quite a few of you guys who have been asking this for quite a while. And it is the new OSD PDB for the Reverb. A lot of you guys out there are very familiar with the Steel PDB, which has been av available for the Alien for quite a while, particularly for you KISS users. Uh, it's been a really handy device and I know a lot of you guys have really enjoyed using that. When I came about to design the Reverb, what I wanted to do was to make an updated version of the Steel PDB for the Reverb that gave you a little bit more extra functionality and compatibility with other things. So uh, I spoke to the guys at Impulse RC and also Alexander Wolf, uh, who is, does all the code work for um, all of these uh, PDBs, OSDs, and so forth, and they've been working feverishly to get this sorted. The biggest uh, thing that they've been working on is the hardware side. So first of all, on the hardware side, uh, they've upgraded from the usual uh, lower grade chips that they use for the regular OSDs and now there's an F3 processor on there. The reason why it will become apparent when you start to use it, it gives it a lot more functionality, a lot more power and a lot more memory. So you're going up from the eight, uh, the, the original, uh, the eight uh, megahertz chips and just giving you a lot more power than what you previously were capable of doing and the main reason for that is because they wanted to achieve a lot more things that the original chip couldn't do rather than just talking a lot of stuff I've literally got a list of all these really cool things that uh, the the OSD does among other things these are some of the more important things for starters it's 6s standalone rated so if you want to use 6s it'll take it there not only supports kiss but it also supports beta flight so there's a lot of flight controllers out there that still don't have beta flight OSD and there's some other functions in there that the beta flight OSD probably doesn't cover or do as well so there's some functionality there that will work for you guys the shape of the uh of the actual OSD as well is a lot more functional so it'll fit in a lot of other frames so you don't need to just use it in the reverb it'll fit into a lot of other different brand name frames quite easily and we did that deliberately so that it has more compatibility and more functionality in other things so the PDB itself is no longer part of the structure like the alien PDB is uh, so it means that you can use it in a lot of other things it now supports GPS magnetometer uh, including on KISS so you've got like your arrow home, your speed, your distance, your altitude, your compass. For all of you long range guys, absolutely perfect for you. Uh, and for those guys on KISS that are wanting that extra feature, it works great. But also for beta flight, it works for you guys as well. On top of that, beta flight, the GPS updates at 1 hertz, so 1 times a second, where this updates at 10 hertz, 10 times a second. So your accuracy and your functionality becomes a lot better overall. On here is also an experimental when to return home. Now, it's not perfect and it's not going to ensure that you get home every single time, but it looks at the distance and it looks at how much uh, capacity of the battery that you've used going out there and will start to warn you when you're starting to get too far away from home. Sean's been working with Alex to ensure that a lot of the stuff is, is automatic, so you don't have to worry about configuring things. If you plug in a Betaflight board, it'll automatically recognize it's Betaflight and work with that. If you plug in a tramp with tramp telemetry so you can change channels and so forth, it'll automatically recognize that you don't need to configure it it has a built-in current sensor but it'll automatically configure whether it uses the built-in current sensor or if you use ESC's with their own current shunt uh, you can also configure that manually but it'll automatically configure that so you don't need to worry about it if you don't want to the GPS magnetometer it'll automatically recognize those things when you plug those things in although you can configure everything except for firmware updates via the OSD for those people who don't like using the stick commands. We've also got a GUI, which I'll show you uh, later on. A user interface, which allows you to adjust everything similar to what like the Betaflight OSD is. You can configure everything that you want in the user interface rather than doing it through the, the OSD live. There are no drivers required for it. They've managed to fix that. On top of that, so long as you're connected to the internet, it will update the user interface automatically for you. You don't need to go searching for all these things. It just works. It's got a, a the standard microphone with the AGC amplifier. So if you're familiar with the Steel PDB, it's got a similar thing to that, 
with a more updated microphone. So very low noise. The, the quality of the microphone is fantastic. So for those people out there who fly with sound, it works absolutely perfect for you. It does all the normal camera control, so it, whether you're using some of the newer dig, uh, Runcam digital stuff or the older Runcam analog stuff or Foxia, you can do all of your camera control via the OSD, change your settings and, and so forth, which makes it a lot easier. It means no more plugging in that little toggle switch and so forth. VTX control, you've got uh, power change on arming, you've got um, boot in pit mode and you can disable that. So when it powers up, you can ask it to boot in pit mode and then you can manually flick out of that. It supports the Lua script and KISS and all that sort of the usual sort of stuff. It also supports working in combination with the TNR. So if you're one of those guys like me that still likes really using the, the TNR, like the, the wand or so forth, or any of the Android apps, I personally prefer changing channels with this rather than through the OSD. This will work in conjunction with it where sometimes these, uh, these different OSDs don't play well with this kind of thing, but this actually works. It also has got the really cool features which you see in something like the the vortex where you can set it so that when it's plugged in and turned on and on the ground and disarmed it's powered at 25 milliwatts and then when you power up it'll go up to the power specified that you want to take off so that way when you're close and before you've taken off you're not uh, blasting other guys and really annoying them. It's also got a thing called beacon mode which is kind of cool where you can set it so that after a certain period of time of being disarmed what it'll do is it'll power up to whatever power setting that you want on the VTX for say 30 seconds and then turn off the VTX for a minute and then turn it on for 30 seconds and then turn it off. And the reason for that is if you go down in a remote location and you have to, it takes you a while to get there like a long distance flying uh, you don't want the battery to run out before you get there and that prolongs the uh, the power of the battery to enable you to find the quad before the hopefully before the battery runs out which is kind of a cool feature we've got LED strip control so for all you LED freaks out there that like to have all kind of rainbow colors and so forth uh, going through your, your quads it's got your typical LED support uh, you can tune your, your PIDs filters rates lots of stuff the usual things through there it supports Voltage, cell voltage, amperage, milliamp hour consumption, RSSI support with FreeSky, Crossfire, a direct wire harness with KISS FC. It's got the usual cascading regulators for clean power going to your VTX. So it doesn't matter what kind of VTX you use, you're going to be guaranteed to have a nice clean power source and no lines through your, through your VTX cam, which is really annoying. One of the other interesting things too is if you're using like a, a Betaflight F4 flight controller, because of those, uh, those uh, processes, you tend to run out of UARTs pretty quickly. So what this does, because it's an F3 flight controller, it gives you a whole new set of UARTs that you can use. And I know uh, quite a lot of you guys out there that are doing the long range stuff, you, you run out of UARTs, so all of a sudden now, where are you gonna put your GPS and so forth? So this gives you extra UARTs to be able enable you to put those extra things on there, so kind of cool. That's kind of like the, the main features of this, which is, gives you a lot of functionality. So what I wanna do now is sort of boot this up and we can have a look through via DVR and also look at the user interface, how all this sort of works. It's not gonna be fully in depth, but it gives you a basic idea of how everything works. So let's get started first of all with the user interface. Okay, so the user interface is kind of cool and it allows you to do everything that you can do in the OSD itself via the goggles. So if you're not one of those people that likes to do that, you'd rather do it on the computer, you've got this option. The only downside for me personally is it's a Windows only program at this stage. I'm a Mac user. If you're a Windows user, you can sit there and go, <laughs> but hey, that means that I've just got to have Windows on bootcamp there to use it for the time being. Got it all set up there. When it is, will be a publicly available, it'll be on the Impulse RC website. The only thing that you need to remember is when you connect it up there, you do need to add LiPo power to the quad for it to connect up. So make sure you remove your props and connect into the micro USB port and connect it up. And here we go. And so it just opens up all normally. And the really cool thing here is you've got down here, you can you can back up and restore all your settings and so forth. And just like on Betaflight and all these other ones, if you've got particular settings, you can save them. And of course you can go through here and you can manually update things if you want. This is all fully up to date, so there's no need to, to worry about any of that. Very simple to update, but like I said, it's all automated. So if there is something available, it'll tell you without you having to go there. So this is all just for manual, manual operations. And as we go in here, you'll see there is various things that you can select. So first of all, you can go into general and you can change your nickname and the timer and the RSSSI. If we go through here, you can select 
your LiPo voltage, cell voltage, and this is just basically all the different things that you can put on your, your the OSD itself. My frames, I'm not running long distance setup, so it's something very simple, but you can make it as simple or as complex as you want. Video transmitter, we can see power and channel and band and so forth, which I've got up there. GPS, you've got altitude, speed, efficiency, home arrow, compass, satellites, coordinates, so forth, and ESC data. So if you're running like 32 amp ESCs, like say the KISS 32 amps that I've got on here, you can get things like your speed and your current and your temperature and so forth. And it's kind of cool. You can actually see the temperature of the, also of the VTX rising. So you can see how hot it is, which is a lot of this sort of stuff, how, how useful it is, is really down to the pilot and what you're trying to get. But you can also change uh, some of these, uh, for example, the milliamp hours, you can change that to an icon. There's various things that you can change to icons. If you don't like numbers, you prefer icons. So you've got things like props, ESCs, watts, milliamp hours, RSSI, timer, so you can get rid of the startup logo. So it's very, very customizable. You can change the font of the, the text. So if you're not happy with the font, you can change that. You can also change, you can basically drag and drop and click and move the, the different areas around the screen, just like Betaflight OSD. Change it and customize it to wherever you want. So if you're not happy with something like say the steel PDB where it's up in the top, you want to put it down in the bottom. Me personally, I prefer it down the bottom then put it down to the bottom. You can customize it the way that you want. Change your video mode, PAL, NTSC. And further up here, we've also got um, things like VTX battery, RSSI camera, GPS, LD strip, setup, all your advanced stuff which goes through there, which I'm not gonna bother to go through there, but you can see through um, this kind of thing that it gives you everything that you can do in the OSD you normally do through your OSD and, and via the transmitter you can do here. So if you prefer to do it that way, it makes it a lot easier for you. Let's get into the OSD and have a look at a little bit of a DVR and we'll have a bit of a, a play through that. You'll, it's a similar sort of thing, but we can play through that and see what's available on there. Okay, to get into the menu for this is the usual thing, just uh, your left. A lot of this is going to look fairly familiar, so I'll just run through it pretty quick. There's not uh, anything in here which is really unusual. So we'll start off with uh, the tune. That's the usual thing where you can uh, set all your PIDs and so forth, and your TPA and, and all that sort of stuff. And you've got your rates here as well. Roll, pitch, your usual thing. Nothing that's unusual to anyone. And also filters and so forth. Uh, the interesting thing to note with this kind of thing is KISS and Betaflight have different setups and different filters and so forth. And of course with the automatic detection that is all customized for whatever, what flight controller that you're using. If we go down to the next one, we've got VTX and this is where you can set your disarmed power. So I've got it set at 25 milliwatts. So when I'm disarmed and on the ground and close to all my friends, I'm running at 25 milliwatts. And then when I arm, it'll bring it up to 600 milliwatts. You can set those to whatever power you want. And of course I'm on race band one and we go down to advanced settings. And this is where you can set uh, pit boot channel and range and so forth. So that you can set it to power up in uh, boot mode and then switch it off manually if that's what you uh, need. We can get down here, VTX max power output. So of course there are various different VTXs with different max uh, power output. So you can customize it to the VTX that you want so that you don't have to worry about having a number that's higher. And it, it just makes it all a lot easier. And down here you got channel override. Channel override is where you can choose to either go through the OSD section to change channel or whether or not you want to use the NFC system on the tramp like the, uh, the, the one system or the Android mobile phone app and so forth and I've got that turned off so I prefer to use the the one system myself so now I go through that um, but you still get the benefits of the power and lots of stuff changing between disarmed and armed and so forth down further you've got beacon mode as I spoke about that before beacon mode is if you go down a long way away it's set so that it will turn the VTX off and on at predetermined amounts of time and that's purely so that you don't overheat the VTX and you don't use too much power through the battery so that you've got more time to find it before that everything dies on you. Down here you've got things like VTX status where it just shows you the temperature, power and the frequency and so forth. We go back out of here and through to the next one. And then we've got the battery section. So you can select your battery capacity, uh, have battery warning on. So of course when you get to the battery alarm percentage, which down here is set at 30%, it's going to flicker in front in the middle of the screen in big writing that the, you're reaching the end of your battery life and will also show you the uh, milliamp hours that you've used, the current milliamp hours, which makes it a lot harder to ignore. And then of course you've got voltage warning, your minimum voltage, 
And then you've got down here, so if you're using uh, BL Halley style ESCs where you need voltage correction and milliamp hour correction, all that sort of stuff. And of course you can set the current sensor down here to either auto or set it to the inbuilt sensor or the ESCs if you're running ESCs with current shunts and you prefer to use them. So currently just got it set to auto. And if we go to the next one, we've got camera control. And camera control is just so you can go into there in any of those cameras. Just change the settings for your, all your camera settings rather than having to set up all that little dongle thing and so forth. It is a little bit finicky to use, but it's just one of those issues where any one of these OSDs where you've got camera control, you've only got a limited amount of control over what you can do with the camera. So once you go into there, you've, uh, it's like two different systems. You get the hang of it, of how to use it, and I'm not going to go and fiddle with that at the moment. But it's not that bad. It's just a little bit fiddly, but it's the limitation of the kind of control that you have in this kind of thing. Your right exit, and we get back out of there. Next, we've got setup. So we've got basic setup, which is all the usual things, English and unit measurement, metric, imperial, and so forth. You've got font size. Uh, the type of goggles that you're using, statistics on, so of course when you land it shows you all the statistics and by default you've got like six screens of, of different statistics and just amazing amount of statistics. If you enable the GPS uh, there'll be even more, so I think there's like another one or two screens of t statistics and you can customize that how little or much that you want. So you got set items, move items and icons and so forth. That's where you can select what items you want uh, to be displayed on the screen and whereabouts they are. So if you want them on the top, you have them on the top, you want them on the bottom, you on the bottom. Same thing as what you've got like on the beta flight GUI and also on this GUI where you can select exactly where you want that sort of stuff. Uh, and advanced display is just various advanced things not really worth working about like how to center the OSD for you wing guys that want your crosshair when you're flying through cloud and so forth and doing nasty illegal things you can turn your crosshair on um, the various different types of timer modes that you can set if you want to use it that way you can set up your call sign and RSSI camera config so once again if you're using a run cam split and so forth you can set various parameters up on there and gps all various things so if you're a long range freak and you love all your gps stuff you can set all your gps coordinates up and magnet decel and all, all that crazy stuff that you guys want to want to play with then you've got led strips so once again you're one of those guys who loves a bit of djing and loves all your leds going absolutely crazy and you've got every color under the sun you want to control over your quad and Lastly, reset to factory defaults. And that is about it. That's the main part of that uh, sorted. There's plenty of other features which are also being implemented uh, and, and that are not quite there yet, but that's the main functions of that. And you can see that it gives you a lot of uh, customizability. Right guys, well, that's a quick overview of the new Impulse RC Reverb OSD PDB. There's a lot of other things that I haven't covered, but I just wanted to do a bit of a quick overview on some of the new things and some of the new features in there. Really hope you guys found that informative and maybe a bit entertaining. There'll be more information about the, the PDB, of course, on Facebook and RC groups and so forth. Very soon, uh, by the time this comes out, it'll be available in various stores and, of course, direct through Impulse RC, Rotor Riot, all the usual stores. I'm all done with this. We've got to go and test this new build out anyway. I'll catch you guys later. I hate it when people know I'm wearing pants.